Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Jo Milmai and this is episode 45, short row variations and summer knitting patterns. Blacker Yarns is the home of 100% pure, natural British yarns, products and patterns. If you're interested in expanding your yarny horizons to explore different sheep breed yarns, check out blackeryarns.co.uk for British and specialist and rare breed yarn. Hello and welcome to the show. Today is Monday the 4th of May 2015. How are you all? I hope you're well since the last time I spoke to you and you enjoyed a little bit of summer knitting yarn enabling in the previous episode. In today's episode, what have we got for you? Well, there is a little bit of news. I'll announce the winner of the giveaway for a skin full miser from episode 43 and another small but humorous giveaway for you in this episode. There'll also be Enablers Corner where we'll be talking about a few patterns suggestions for you to consider with your summer knitting yarns we talked about in the last episode and there will be the return of the sock surgery with the wonderful Claire Devine who will be talking about variations on short row heels to bring the rest of our April month of socks um, bang up to date ready for the next month so grab your knitting and a beverage of your choice I'm on water so rock and roll And let's crack on with the show. So moving on to the news. First of all, I must say thank you very much to everyone that's got in touch since the last podcast. It's been lovely to hear from you. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. And if you're a new listener, come in, sit down, put your feet up, grab yourself a slice of cake and I hope you'll enjoy what you find here. So first of all, we're going to give away some yarn because that makes me very happy. And thank you to everyone that has got in touch, um, sorry, entered rather. We've done the thank you for getting in touch. Uh, entered the giveaway to win a skein of Fall Miser in episode 43. That giveaway closed yesterday and I have already super efficiently done the random number generator of good fortune sponsored by our favourite random number generator, random.org. And the winner was number 66, who is Emphids and on Ravelry, and she is Madeline Madeline from Alberta. Congratulations to you. If you can PM me your address, please, I will get that in the post to you this week. Uh, quite a new listener to the show, um, but we don't judge anyone on how long they've listened here. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, thank you to everyone who took the time to give me feedback on what you enjoy most about the show. Uh, so that I can plan more of it in. It's It's been a real mix of what people like, which has been interesting. I thought there would be some obvious favourites, but um, different people seem to like different things, which is good. There are going to be some more exciting plans in the work for later in the year for features, etc. and working with different podcasters, which I'm hoping you'll find uh, to be fun as well. And... Uh, Hopefully, we'll uh, keep keep the fringe knitting patterns going and the enabling, I'm sure, will keep going. The enabling is far easier, comes far more naturally than the pattern pick. That's a sort of a very organic thing. It gets sparked by some random saying or something and, um, and that will spark the pattern pick. Just it is a lot of what is in the show is quite organic, to be honest. Um, But what I might do is uh, go off to the Ravelry group and open a thread for random knitting patterns that you all find because I get a lot of, somewhat surprisingly, a lot of emails of random knitting patterns, which I absolutely love. But I feel like I'm keeping them all to myself and that maybe you guys might need that too. You know, if you're having a bit of a rubbish day at work and you just think, you know what, I have had enough, you go on to Ravelry, go into the random knitting Uh, patterns thread and just have a little browse give yourself a bit of a giggle in fact there's got to be a calendar in there hasn't there like a 365 day calendar of random knitting patterns um that's a whole other project 365 so yeah thank you um 
to everyone that, that did pass on the feedback. I really do appreciate it and I do listen to, to what you have to say. And thank you to all of you that were very kind to me and said nice things in that thread. It wasn't my intention to get a lot of love, but I got it anyway and I am very grateful for it. It made me smile, so thank you very much. Um, in true Joe style, of course, I've got another giveaway for you because giveaways make us happy. And this is a bit of a random uh, one, uh, a little bit comedy, but hopefully someone will like it. Um, and I have the yarn and pattern for a knitted Shaun the Sheep to give away. Now this was a gift at Pod Retreat this year and for those of you that have listened to it, it was a rather emotional time um, in my life and um, more chiefly in, in the life of the car to be quite honest. And um, I wouldn't say that the yarn is cursed or anything by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm just simply never going to get a chance to knit this Shaun the Sheep. Now it's Rowan yarn so it's a reasonably nice uh, yarn to be working with. It's it's merino, it's not acrylic or anything and it comes with a pattern and because I'm nice I'll even sew a little project bag for you to keep your Shaun the Sheep knitting in whilst you're doing it. Um, it would be good this time of year. There's loads of lambs in the fields and um, it's good for little kiddies to play with and stuff so I thought I would just share the love and release it from the yarn vault into the world. So I will open a thread on Ravelry. And if you want to enter, just go over there. And uh, and comment in the thread about anything you like, really. Favourite sheep breed? That'll do, won't it? And, um, and there'll be a winner drawn at random in uh, two weeks' time for that. So that's a giveaway for a little Sean the Sheep kit. Awesome. Final bit of news for you. And it's kind of news, but not. But I'm going to tell you about it, the news I do have about it, and hopefully there will be some more detail released at some point soon regarding this. But Highland Wool Festival is going to be taking place at the Dingwall Auction Mart. This is in Northern Scotland. And it will be taking place on Saturday the 23rd of May 2015. Now, unfortunately, they've just cancelled all of the classes due to lack of interest. Um... But all of the exhibitors are still going to be there. I didn't go last year, but I have it on good authority that from the people that went, that there were some really good exhibitors there. I do know that Helen Lockhart of Ripples Crafts is going to be exhibiting there because that's basically her, as near as to her backyard as you're going to get really in terms of fibre festivals. If you're not familiar with Ripples Crafts yarns, um. Helen is a dyer, hand dyer, who lives in Loch Inver in the Highlands of Scotland. And she does some beautiful, beautiful colourways, some quite highly coloured colourways that are very heavily influenced by the landscape and the beauty of Loch Inver um, and the surrounding area, really. She has her own dye technique that she's developed called Ascent Storms, which produces the most wonderful colourways. Um it is deadly. It's another one of these updates that you just want to avoid because um it just gets expensive otherwise. <laughs> and uh one of her uh, colourways that she does that is one of my favourites is called a twist of um twist of lime and it's it's basically be- based on gin um or the lime in the gin anyway. Um but yeah, she is www.ripplescrafts.com, I believe. I'll put a link in the show notes. So if you can't make it to Dingwall Auction Mart on the 23rd of May, then I would consider, if I were you, hopping over to Ripples Crafts and giving her a good look. And um, Claire actually recently designed some sock patterns for the Ascent Storms dyeing technique because it's very short colour change. Dye technique, it can be... It needs to be matched very carefully to the project. And she she's designed a couple of patterns, slipped and there's another one that's escaped me. I will link to those in the show notes and put a picture in for you. But one of them is slipped, the one that always that, that I remember, um, S-L-I-P-T. And um, she developed those with Helen for a special Edinburgh Yarn Festival colourway that Helen did. Um, she worked with her on that. So go over there and have a look. The, unfortunately, there is no exhibitor list yet, hearing no slight annoyance in the voice whatsoever there, um, for Highland Wool Festival. So I can't tell you who else is, is going to be there. I 
I'm going to try and go along. It's about an hour and 15 from where I live, uh, provided I can get someone to mind the uh, mill munchkins because I'm not sure I really need them running around a wool festival. It could all get a little bit too exciting. Hopefully I'll know in the next couple of weeks uh, whether I will be able to make it along to that. Um, But if you're going to be in the area, if you're on your holidays or you can make it, um, as I said last year, the exhibitor list was pretty impressive. So um, as soon as I know who's going to be going, um, I will share that around so that if you follow me on social media, you will get it. And I will link to it in the show notes when it comes out. Um, But it's not a great deal of time away now, so... They need to get on it really. Um, but yeah, that is Highland Wool Festival Dingwall Auction Mart. So I think it's time to go on to Enablers Corner. So following on from the review last week of the Blacker Yarns Leoness, the new yarn that was launched on Friday the 1st of May, to rapturous applause, it would seem. It's pretty much sold out already, I think. And of course, the other fibres that I talked about in the last episode, uh, the cotton, bamboo, and there was a bit about linen as well. If you're going to be using those for your summer knitting and you're looking to move away from the wool a little bit, but you still want to get your knit on and create some garments that are going to be suitable for the warmer weather, it seemed remiss of me not to do some sort of pattern round up um not a comedy one this time this is deadly serious uh to give you a few ideas of uh, what you could knit with uh, your summer knitting yarns and essentially this is jaw's wish list if i had lots of time to knit this or a small army of umpalumpers knitting for me um i would i would get them to make all of these so we'll start off at the top with uh the Linum Tea by Bristol Ivy. This was published in Knit Scene in March 2014 and it is a pattern for a linen t-shirt uh, which is quite loose fitting and it has a kind of wide boat neck at the top with the shoulders coming to just off the shoulder. Uh, so it's quite a square looking garment. The top couple of inches around the neck and shoulder are in uh, lace. And then the rest of it is in stockinette stitch. It's got a quite loose fit as I mentioned and there's plenty of drape in the pattern. It looks like it'd be quite flattering if you've got a little bit of a tummy it would probably hide that. Um, it'd look brilliant if you have wide shoulders I think because it would you could just extend it a little bit and have it hanging from that if you chose the uh, the right sort of yarn for the job uh, it, it could have quite look quite nice so that one is the Linum Tea by Bristol Ivy the next one is Camellia Tea by Play Sweet Music Designs this is a paid for pattern it's 36 kroner and it is a pattern for a really loose sort of throw over t-shirt and it's done in stocking stitch but it has panels on the body not on the body sorry it has lace panels on the sleeves the body is stocking stitch and then it has lace panels on the sleeve so if you like the is it old romance cardigan i think it's a hohi locatelli design if you like that look of the lace panel on the arms um, then this could be a good option for you because it's got quite a similar aesthetic to that, albeit it isn't a cardigan, it is a t-shirt. The next one I have is Napped Falter by Stephanie Polmeyer. This was published in Hollenitz in the Spring Summer 2013 ebook. This again is another loose t-shirt and at the top it has uh, lace panels on the front and the back. So the, the whole top of Sort of to, from the top of the neck to the waist is a big kind of lace panels design, if you will, vertical sort of looking panels, matching design on the front and back. And then below that, it becomes very fitted and it is a, it's a ribbed pattern. So it's very fitted from the hips up to the waist and then it sort of blooms out a little bit and is loose on the top. Um, if you've got a tiny waist, it's going to look great on you. If you've got plenty of hips going on, it's probably going to look good as well. Um, And if you've got a big boss, it's not necessarily going to be massively accentuating that, I don't 
think, although it's not something I massively have a problem with myself. <laughs> um, the next one, moving swiftly on before I dig any holes whatsoever, is the Siesta Tea by Nicole Montgomery. This is five ninety nine US uh, for a dolman style t shirt. It's knitted in one piece and it has a boat neck, and it's basically an open sort of mesh work stitch over the whole front and back. So it'd be perfect for a sort of lazy throw on at the beach. If you've got a vest underneath, you could throw it over just to give you a bit of warmth um, in the evening. But it's cool enough that it lets a bit of breeze through. Uh, through the mesh during the day. Another one I have for you. Um, this is a four ply. The others have all been DK. Um, the, a four ply one is August Sky by Maria Olsen. This is a brand new pattern. It's only come out this month and it is for a sweater. The sweater is um, six dollars US. It's a paid for pattern and it is all done in eyelet lace throughout uh, with three quarter length sleeves. Again, really nice. You could do it in a nice bold colour, nice white uh, vest underneath or white t-shirt. I think it would look really cool. Other patterns that you're probably going to want to have a look at come courtesy of Pom Pom Quarterly, somewhat unsurprisingly. Uh, the first one of which is Water Lily by Megan Fernandez. Um, pretty prolific pattern now. It was released in issue 8, which was spring 2014. And it is on about 270 projects now. It is, a, again, another t-shirt with a stocking stitch body and then a lace sort of patterned yoke, if you will, or top from just above that, the top bust measurement upwards. And again, that could look really good in uh, one of these light summer yarns. And just out in the, the last week or so is... Um, the preview for issue 13 which is summer 2015 and in that one the one that caught my eye in particular is Talavera by or Talavera by Amanda B Collins this was originally knit in a baby camel and silk blend but I think it could look really good in uh, something with a little bamboo maybe and it is another t-shirt but it's completely lace um all the way over front and back with a sort of mock kind of funnel neck but a very wide one so it kind of drapes loosely and the entire t-shirt is uh, is knitted with uh, quite a bit of positive ease um, so again another light and airy pattern uh, for a bit of summer knitting I have concentrated more on on the tops in general because I don't think that summer knitting should be restricted just to shawls and um, lovely as they are I think you need to kind of expand your horizons a little bit when it comes to uh, to your knitting. And there's nothing wrong with trying garments in different fibres, in plant fibres, wearing garments in summer. It's not warm all the time everywhere. And it's certainly not warm all the time in the UK in uh, summer. And these are the kind of things that could get quite a lot of use potentially. And you can layer up with other things underneath them to increase the heat if, if needs be. So I've kept I've purposefully kept away from the shawls and towards the garments for this one. Because if you're going to knit something, have a good go at it. You know, you're going to try something new, commit to something reasonably large project wise. So you really get a feel for working with those different fibres. So that was my little roundup of suggestions of patterns for um, summer knitting. Uh, in terms of garments and suggestions of what you could use your cotton bamboo and linen yarns for if you have any suggestions please pop over to the group in Ravelry and uh, start pattern enabling for all of us who are planning our summer knitting and share your ideas with us it'd be great to hear from you so on to the sock surgery Leoness was developed by Sonia at Blacker Yarns and was born out of her love of working with linen yarn. Linen provides a set of characteristics as unique as those of wool. It is durable, cool and most importantly from a knitter's perspective retains its block wonderfully making it ideal for lace projects. When thinking about expanding the Blacker Yarns range Sonia was interested in creating a lighter, breathable yarn for summer projects. After spending a 
few too many afternoons knitting massive woolly jumpers on the beach, something clicked and she decided to create a yarn which combines the best characteristics of wool and linen. Leoness is not only ideal for wearing in the summer, but also a perfect way to continue crafting all summer long. At Blacker Yarns, British yarn is close to their hearts, so they really wanted to create a British alternative to a pure cotton or linen blend. Leoness is available at www.blackeryarns.co.uk. Head on over to bag your yarn in five sumptuous shades and a neutral and enjoy making shawls, cardigans and more with Leoness this summer. Okay, so I am delighted to welcome back Claire again to the sock surgery and this week, following on from her intro to short rows, uh, she's going to be talking about short row variations. So welcome to the show, Claire. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? I'm not too bad. Not too bad. Just looking down at my very lovely stripy sock. I'm still quite obsessed with my um, seaside stripes that we talked about in the in the stripy episode. Anyway, it's not got anything to do with short rows, but I thought I'd just let you know. You know, <laughs> I like to keep people updated on my stripy exploits. Right. Um. So short row heels. So after we did our um, sort of whistle stop tour around various short row methods, I've been thinking a little bit more about variations on the short row. And I always think of variations on the short row as the garter stitch short row heel, which I love for a number of reasons. One, because it's got squishy, squishy garter stitch, which I know probably makes your skin crawl, Joe. Um, you also don't have to pick up any wraps, which really makes me happy because wraps and turns aren't my favorite thing. But they can be quite um, sort of shallow and a lot of people struggle with fit. So I started to think about variations that really helped with fit. And I found a couple, well, I actually found three. That's a South African couple because we don't really do couples in twos. Um, and I thought I'd just talk about those quickly on the, on the podcast today. So as always, the uh, blog will be full of all the links and tutorials because I can't explain everything in words. Um, and it's always helpful to have lots of extra resources. So the first one is actually um, the first sock I ever knitted, which is the boomerang heel. And it's uh, very similar to a normal short row heel. So you, you do your widening, sorry, your narrowing of your heel. And then what you do is this boomerang round, which fixes all the wraps uh, well, and deals with all the short rows, it sort of reconnects the sock in the round and really avoids that hole at the edges. And it's a really interesting construction. So I would definitely recommend giving it a try if you like short row heels and you want something a little different. There's two patterns that I would really recommend, though unfortunately the lady is not selling them to the EU at the moment. Um, due to the VAT restrictions, but that's going to change on the 1st of June. And um, the patterns are, are really, really nice. So the one is day-long socks both ways, which is quite a sort of plain universal sock, and that was the first sock I ever knitted. But the one that I'm really keen to recommend to people is called Burning Stripes, and it's just really fun. It uses this boomerang technique, and it also has sort of a, an interesting striping um, pattern with an interesting sort of seam. I don't know if you've seen it, Joe. It was knitted quite heavily in the South African group at one stage. Do you recall? I can't no. remember it. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, I'll link to that. So those are two, and that's a slight variation on the short row heel with that extra boomerang round. Really helps with reducing the holes at the edges, which some people really struggle with short row heels. Now the other two are quite different. They're still short row heels essentially, but they do sort of vary in their construction. I'll just give a brief overview because obviously I can't go into the exact details of the construction because that's kind of giving away the secret sauce. The first one is the hugely popular fish lips kiss heel. Have you knitted this one, Joe? I've not, but I've heard a lot of people um, say they like it. I know oh. um, it's been cake, Amy really liked it, but it was more the, um, I can't really say it, without tripping over my words. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a reason not to know that I haven't knitted it either, but um, I have heard lots of good things about it, and there's almost 4,000 projects on Ravelry, and I do kind of think that if it was rubbish, there wouldn't be 4,000 projects on Ravelry. So I definitely think it's worth looking into. It's um, a dollar, 
or a dollar twenty for us that have to pay EU VAT, but that's about eighty p. So it's not really going to break the bank. And I've had a, another look through it this morning, and it's got sixteen pages of really good detailed photographs, detailed explanations, sorts of information in there about getting a good fit as well. Um, there's sort of a, a, a model, a, a cutout that you can create of the person's foot. And um, socks therapist goes through the sort of construction in great detail. And lots of people have been raving about it. So I think it's definitely worth checking out if you want a variation on short rows. Um, according to her, there are no wraps, no picking up stitches, no maths, no counting. Um, so the, the cell is really good on it. So I, I'd love to know what people think. And then the other one is a cat boardie. Now, I know Joe is a big fan of cat boardies method for picking up wraps. This is the sweet tomato heel, um, which is a, a cat boardy sort of heel invention. And again, it's a short row heel knit in three wedges. So it has a sort of a slightly different shaping and a, a structure to it than the normal short row heel, which is almost in, in a sense a sort of wedge because you go in and narrow and then out and widen. So Cat Bordy has a really good uh, YouTube tutorial video. And then she has a, an exceptionally good book um, with lots of details in it and 16 sock patterns. So that is available. Um, I'll put the link up. It's available via Pattern Fish, which again, I think is probably to do with EU VAT um, and roll on the 1st of June when everything goes back to normal on Ravelry. It's all I can say about that. So those are my three variations. The boomerang heel, which is very similar to a normal short row. The fish lips kiss heel, uh, which is uh, being raved about all over the place, and the sweet tomato heel, which has three little wedges and is by Kat Bordy, and she's excellent, so definitely worth a look. Brilliant. Thanks very much for that, Claire. No worries. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week. I don't think Bose is happy about that. I hope you've all enjoyed the show and you've picked up a few tips for your summer knitting or your short row heels. I did remember the, the, the project Claire mentioned. Once I saw the picture, I was like, oh yeah, those those socks, those ones. Um, they are an awesome, it is an awesome pattern, the burning stripes pattern. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed your time with me this week and I hope you'll all have a great week. Happy crafting and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can do so via the blog or I'm Shiny Bees on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and Facebook. You can email me at shinybeesinfo at gmail.com. Music for this episode is provided via Music Alley and it is Adam and the Walter Boys and I Need a Drink. I need a drink.